love, and kindness. Sit with us for a moment. Now imagine you don't have that memory anymore. Not only do you not have that memory, but you've lost something. And you're not sure what. With every day comes more loss, until there's nothing left. Nothing left of you or those around you. Not only have you lost them, but you have no idea who they are or why they're here. But they came for you. I know it's like not to be recognised. I've gone from a grandchild to a complete stranger in only a few short years. Why? Because of dementia. My grandpa battled dementia for over 10 years, so I witnessed the entire decline in his cognitive and recognisability. However, there was never much thought as to how this disease was affecting my family. The focus was on improving my grandpa's quality of life for as long as possible. And so, like millions of families, there was, there was little thought given as to how to support us through this alien world we've just been thrown into, full of scary outcomes and medical jargon. So what is it? Alzheimer's is a degenerative type of dementia that over time affects thinking, memory and behaviour. For the majority of people, it is caused by a combination of genes, lifestyle and environment, and age. However, some who have inherited a faulty gene from a parent are then extremely likely to develop the disease, no matter what other facts play a part. Around 1 in 100 cases are caused by an inherited faulty gene. Through genetic testing, you can find out if you pass down the gene. Imagine being told that you're battling a disease that will one day take away your independence, personality, and even the ability to recognise loved ones. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. Scary, isn't it? Currently, around 900,000 people go through this within the UK. Around 1 in 20 people are diagnosed in their early 50s, but the majority of people are diagnosed aged over 65. However, in 2013, there were 42,325 people with early onset dementia. There is a discrepancy in those being diagnosed, however, as it's been found that people from black, Asian and ethnic minority backgrounds are less likely to receive a diagnosis or support. Although, due to a lack of evidence, the prevalence figures for this have not been updated since 2014. Similarly, people with learning disabilities are also not often are also, also less represented, as it can take a long time and be very difficult to simply get a diagnosis. This could be because the symptoms are often less prominent and and less prominent until they become very severe. And so there's less worry about getting a diagnosis because people are unable to see the increasing symptoms. However, there has been a lot of research into dementia, including the risk factors, genetic components, and the challenges faced by people with dementia. Although there is limited research into how to best support the families of dementia sufferers outside of the immediate carers. Due to the limited research, there seems to be confusing legislation to match, which includes the Care Act 2014, the Mental Health Act 2007, and the Dementia and Mental Capacity Act 2005. The third act is meant to support and protect people when they lose mental capacity and are unable to make some decisions. It covers important things, such as financial affairs and health and social care, as well as other everyday things, such as what clothes the person wears and what they eat and also who is allowed to make these decisions. However, there is little support given to families as to how to emotionally and financially prepare themselves for the DOLS assessment, which is what is required to get an official dementia diagnosis, and just how long the process can be. The majority of support comes from families after the battle has been lost, with memory walks and memory donations being suggested as ways to raise money for charity, and a forget-me-not scheme being used as a way to keep the memory of the person alive. Notice how most of those activities listed start in memory. Why is it that everything needs to be done in memory? This could be down to the fact that by the time people are able to get a diagnosis, the disease is already so deep set and severe that the focus becomes on palliative care, and the family is left without any direct support. I believe that we should, we should be supporting those families who have a dementia warrior in them, 
with ways to capture any moments they can. So the when the disease takes too much, they can still have a part of that person, even though they may not be there now. This could be as simple as providing templates on how to make an experiences book for the person with dementia is able to be involved in. Having family spaces for people to come together within their own communities so they know they aren't alone. Another idea would be to have a celebration of life so that people are able to come together and engage in memories together with their warrior. Finally, I believe that there should be more advocacy for dementia and its effects on families. Because in the words of the Deputy Manager of Cali Care Home, Susie Woodage, support is bad for families and they can only get support from, from GPs or charities such as mine. They do a good job. So if mine can do a good job, why is it so hard to find support elsewhere?